Ahoy there, Captain Bensi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by NetEase, and I hope you folks are all enjoying this game as much as I am. In today's video, we're going to be talking about ship statistics, how to find them, what they all mean, and how you can use that information to influence your decision as to which ships you choose to upgrade and put into your fleets. If you're enjoying this content, please let me know by hitting a like on it, sub to the channel for all things Infinite Lagrange, and of course, let me know in the comment section down below what topics you'd like to see me cover in future content. We do also have the Catskull Discord, you can come join us on there, we've got some open channels, very friendly bunch of guys who will quite happily help at any opportunity in regards to Infinite Lagrange. Of course, come find me on the Infinite Lagrange official uh, Discord server as well, I'm trying to show my face in there a little bit more. Otherwise, let's jump right in on this one. Now, in regards to ship statistics, of course, we need to go to the ship's blueprint. You can access this, first of all, by coming to the Expanse window. This is the one that you see that's all space like this. If you're inside the base view, you will need to then come back out by tapping Expanse in the bottom left. Anyway, we then tap on Blueprint, and this will take us through to the Blueprint menu, and we're going to look for the particular blueprint of the ship in question. In this case, we're going to go into Ship Blueprint, and we're going to talk about one of my favourite destroyers in the game, the Winged Hussar. This is a really cool destroyer. I love this to pieces. It's fairly easy to get hold of early on as well. Well worth your time upgrading, in my opinion. But hey, we'll talk about that more in a, in a future video. Now, when we look at a blueprint page, there's a whole load of information thrown at us on screen here. In the top left, we get the name, the Winged Hussar Light Missile Destroyer, we get its main version number, how many tech points are available to enhance various systems, and what type of blueprint it is. In this case, it's the A anti-ship uh, type blueprint. And I've got another video where we talk about unlocking and upgrading ships that will explain what those blueprint numbers up in the top left there all actually mean. For today's video, we're looking at the bottom of the blueprint menu here, the firepower stats, the basic stats, and the combat rolls. We're going to cover all of these um, fairly intensively, I think. So let's start off with the firepower stats. Now, all ships come with three firepower stats. Sometimes it's zero, but they do still have it displayed. In the case here, um, starting at the top, we have anti-ship fire. For the Winged Hussar, that starts at 6,136. I've then enhanced it by 2,624, giving us a total of 8,760 anti-ship firepower. The second one down then is Air Defense. This again, you can see 1,433 basic. I've enhanced this by 860, giving us a total of 2,293. The third and final stat is Siege Fire, shown here as 1367 damage plus 323 on enhancement gives us 1690 in total. So what do those actually mean? Well, the anti-ship fire is, well, basically when you're shooting at enemy ships. Anything that is a frigate or larger qualifies as a ship. So frigates, destroyers, cruisers, battle cruisers, carriers and battleships are all considered under that. If we then go down to the anti-air uh, the air defense stat here, this is when you are firing at aircraft or corvettes. Anything smaller than a frigate uses this stat, air defense. So if I'm shooting at something like a CV II. 003 or however the heck you want to say it, Corvette, this is the stat I'm going to be using, whereas if I'm shooting at something like an FG300, it's going to be the anti-ship fire stat that is going to be used and is going to be uh, you know, in, in effect there. The third and final stat then is Siege Fire. This is when you are firing, as you'd expect, at enemy structures, whether that's another player's base, a pirate outpost, or indeed a city that you're trying to take over. The higher the siege damage, the better you are at blowing up stations, basically. And you'll notice that there are different ships that tend to wait variously into these. You'll find that some ships, like here, the Winged Hussar, is an anti-ship type, which means, of course, most of its damage is going to be in the anti-ship stat. Whereas you'll find that others are anti-aircraft or, you know, a siege ship like the heavy landers, things like that, that have higher siege damage. And so you just work out from there what that ship is actually intended to do and whether or not it's going to be useful. Now, of course, weapons themselves aren't just relegated to this firepower stat here. And bear in mind just for a moment that total anti-ship fire of 8,760. If we look at the central part of the blueprint, where you actually see the ship itself, you'll see that the Winged Hussar has two weapon systems. It has a Carillion Heavy Battery System and a Storm Missile System. Next to the Storm Missile System, you'll see there's a little M in an orange box. That denotes that the Storm Missile System is the Winged Hussar's main weapon system. It's where most of its damage comes from and where most of its abilities are. The Carillion Heavy Battery System, therefore, is a support system. It's not 
the main priority of this ship and you can see if I just move the camera slightly I've upgraded or rather enhanced those accordingly the storm missile system I've upgraded it five times the Carillion heavy battery systems only been upgraded the once other than the blueprint has been enhanced with the tech points so let's tap in on this here you can see at the bottom of the screen you have the enhanced system and this is where I have used tech points to upgrade the ship and you can see the ones I haven't upgraded all here on the right hand side for seven tech points. Of course if you look at the main part of the screen here as well the Times 2 Mark 2 CM 4X 28 uh, 280A Storm Missile Launcher Nest. There is also a bit next to that that looks like a targeting reticule with a couple of upright chevrons. If we tap on that, that's where you upgrade the blueprint of the particular weapon type, and that will then increase the damage overall of that weapon system at maximum of 30% increase there, as you can see, and I've done that to both of these systems. We'll talk about that more in the upgrading and unlocking video. For now, though, the important point is to draw your attention down to the bottom left here at the combat stats. 5824 anti-ship fire, 2293 anti-air, and 313 siege. Compare that to the original 8760, 2293, and 1690. You'll see that obviously that firepower stat as we're looking at it now is all of the weapon systems combined, whereas if we're tapping just on the storm, that is then the combat stats of just the storm. Now, if we tap on the actual name, where it says times two mark two CM, yada, 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 if we tap on that, it takes us to the weapon system page. And this is worth a brief look at. Well, actually, it's worth a fairly in-depth look at. Now, the first thing to notice on this is that it says it's an anti-ship fire weapon system. 5,824 per minute. Now, other games will often refer to things as DPS, damage per second. Infinite Lagrange, the battles can take so long that it's pointless looking at it per second because that becomes meaningless um, over the scale of the fights that can take place here. We instead talk about things in damage per minute. 5,824 damage is applied to enemy ships per minute under optimal conditions. We then have a damage type. Now, this is an incredibly important stat. We're not going to focus on it too much now. We'll look at it later on in this video. But for now, you need to understand that damage comes in two types, either projectile or energy. And in this case, the storm missile nest is a projectile weapon. That means it does physical damage. It hits against a target's armor. We then have the damage per hit, the rounds per cycle, and the attack interval. Now, damage per hit is basically how much in each individual warhead applies when it hits the target, 168 plus 50. We then have rounds per cycle. Each cycle will launch four rounds. It's one by four, one cluster of four missiles launched every time this activates, and the attack interval is 14 seconds. So it launches one cluster of four missiles every 14 seconds. That then means that the individual missiles do the damage that you've seen there per hit, and that will give you your damage per minute over all there once you work out each of those. Basically, every 14 seconds, it launches a cluster of four missiles, and each of those missiles does 168 plus 50 damage. Now, if we tap on the little eye here as well, this brings about our attack priority. This is an incredibly important stat, and it utterly bewilders me that it is so hidden. Basically, you need to know what your ships are actually going to be targeting, because in Infinite Lagrange, you don't get to pick the targets. The ships all do their own thing. So here, the Winged Hussars Storm Missile Launcher Nest prioritizes enemy destroyers. It will then go for frigates, and it will then shoot at corvettes, followed by fighters. And obviously against destroyers and frigates, it's going to be using that full 5,824 DPM. Whereas against the corvettes and the fighters, the total DPM it will be able to put out at maximum is 2,293. We then get a cool little module description here. A medium assault missile launching system equipped with dense missile launcher nests. It has a large complement of missiles and is capable of rapid fire against various types of ships with its generic medium missiles. Just a cool little bit of fluff there about this particular weapon system. I love the amount of detail that it has gone into on each of these ships. It's awesome and I love it. Anyway, so that gives us the Storm Missile System. It starts by shooting at destroyers. Once it doesn't have any destroyer targets left, it'll start to shoot at frigates. When it's out of frigates to shoot at, it will then aim at corvettes and fighters. It's worth noting there, it will not ever prioritize a cruiser, a battle cruiser, a carrier, or anything like that, which means that it will only shoot at those if they are literally the last thing on the field. Well worth 
noting. It also means if you're struggling against, say, corvettes and fighters, then this isn't a ship that's going to help you because it's going to have to deal with the destroyers and the frigates first, whilst those corvettes and fighters are doing their thing. Let's come out now and have a look at the Carillion Heavy Battery System by contrast. Now here you can see that again we've got a lot lower stats, 2,936 anti-ship, it's got a zero for anti-aircraft, and a 1,377 for siege. This is 100% a siege battery, and it actually says that here at the top left, CG2358C Carillion K Dual Cannon Bow Siege Battery. This is designed for punching holes in structures. It has an anti-ship fire of 2936 per minute, which is still its largest damage stat, um, but it is designed more for doing that siege damage. To the overall percentage, this isn't applying as much anti-ship fire to the total as it is applying to the siege fire. Again, you can see this is a projectile type weapon. It's firing a physical projectile at whatever it's aiming at, and it's doing 400 damage per hit, plus 120. There are two rounds per cycle, so it fires off two of these at a time, and the attack interval is 21.2 seconds. Every 21.2 seconds, it fires two shells at its target, each doing 400 plus 120 damage. Let's have a look at its target priority here. Now this time around, you'll see that its attack priority again starts with destroyers and frigates, so if we add that in with the storm missile nest, you'll see that the Hussar is going to be going after destroyers and frigates first. Once there are no destroyers, it will start shooting at the frigates. Once the frigates are all gone, then the Carillion Heavy Battery System will start to shoot at carriers, then battle cruisers and cruisers, whereas the missile system will start to target things like uh, aircraft and corvettes instead. So against destroyers and frigates, the winged Hussar is applying all of its firepower. But once there are no destroyers or frigates, it is then splitting its firepower against different targets. And it says here, it's a specially modified bow-mounted dual-fire cannon. Its unique no-turret design is able to lock onto all targets in front of the ship, dealing devastating damage to medium to large targets when all cannons are fired at once, but at the cost of a slow reload speed. And it does. This is what's referred to as a high alpha weapon. It's a long time between the shots, 21.2 seconds, but when it actually fires those shots, it fires twice, each launching a shell, 400 damage plus 120. That is a big smack of damage from that cannon when it hits. Now that target priority is absolutely vital to understand when you're looking at a ship. If you are going up against a lot of aircraft, you need to make sure that your weapons are actually capable of shooting at aircraft. If you need something to take down battle cruisers quickly, um, and you don't care the fact there are destroyers and frigates around, it, it, my point is you need to look at what you're going to be targeting and figure out whether or not your ships are actually going to perform that role. I like the Winged Hussar for exactly this reason. Early on in the game, you go up against a lot of destroyers and frigates, at which point both the Carillion and the Storm Weapon systems are firing at those targets, doing an insane amount of damage. Then, once the destroyers and frigates are gone, you'll start to shoot at both carriers and aircraft. You don't just kind of, you, know, you split the fire and start taking out different targets at that point, and that's just worth bearing in mind. Now, it's also interesting to note that weapons do have hit points, um, and they can actually be deactivated. I'm not entirely sure where we find this. Oh, there it is there. I've completely forgotten. If you tap on this little box here at the bottom, it brings up the system info, which gives you the hit points of that system. 5,500 in the case of the Carillion Heavy Battery System, and if we come out and have a look at that Storm Missile System, that has, again, 5,500 HP. Weapon systems can be destroyed. If enough damage is dealt to that weapon system, it will stop firing. And again, that is a key point to note. Some ships do have the ability to repair their weapon systems or increased HP to that particular weapon system, or indeed, like, just ways to avoid damage. Um, certainly missiles tend to be quite prone to this because missiles can explode in the tubes if they're hit at the wrong time, from what I gather based on information from some of the upgrades just a point that's worth noting. But anyway, that about covers us for weapons, so let's move across to the basic stats side of things. Now the first stat that we have here is HP. There are 20,780 hit points on this Winged Hussar Light Missile Destroyer. This is basically the total amount of damage that the Winged Hussar can take before it will try to flee the battlefield. And this is where evasion comes in as a stat. The higher your evasion, the more likely your ship is to actually escape. Once its HP hits zero, it will try to disengage. 
If it succeeds, it will fly back to your station, where it will then be refitted, repurposed and added back into your dock so you can return it to your fleet. If, you, if, if it fails to evade, it will be destroyed and you'll need to rebuild it manually using new resources, etc. The second statistic is its armour. Here we can see that the Winged Hussar has a basic armour of 20. Now, armour basically reduces the damage inflicted to the ship. Essentially, you have two types of resistances on your ship, um, so two types of damage that can be applied to your ship, both physical and energy. And armor reduces the amount of physical damage that you take from projectile weapons. So if you're hit with a projectile weapon, armor will absorb some of that damage before it starts eating into your total HP. So anything that's not absorbed by the armor gets hit straight onto the HP. Once you hit zero HP, the ship will try to disengage. The bottom two stats here are then both propulsion. On the left we have cruising speed. This here we see the winged hussar has a basic cruising speed of 700. That's quite slow for a destroyer and that will influence how long it takes to get into position. The second stat is then warp speed. This is when you are returning to base or moving to a known operation where you see that the path that the ship uses becomes curved and the ship looks like it's kind of shining with sort of a funnel of energy around the front of it. That, again, it's just how fast your ship can relocate from place to place. We then have the active service, how many of these ships can be built, and how many of them you have built. So here, you can see that the Winged Hussar, you're allowed 10 of these in your fleets at maximum, and I've filled that out. I like this ship a lot, so I've used all 10. If we then tap on the little icon here at the top, you can see we've got a couple of more statistics here, which is basically your production info. This is how much metal, how much crystal, how much deuterium, how long uh, it will take to build, how long it will take to build, 47 minutes and 30 seconds, followed by then its storage space, and then the other two are related to engineering ships, and we'll talk about those in a future video. If we actually tap on the armor system here though, if we go into the Winged Hussar's armor system, again, not only do we have the capability to enhance this using tech points, as we've seen with other ships, we then have the in-depth armor stats here at the bottom, which again is going to show us the armor is 20, we have an HP of 20,780, we then have the energy shield. This is what I've been talking about, why there's a difference between projectile and energy weapons. If you are hit with an energy weapon, it's going to ignore your armor completely, that is where your energy shield will come in. Now here you can see the Winged Hussar has a 2% energy shield. That's really not much at all. Really not much. It means any time an energy shot hits you, 2% of that gets absorbed. So if something hits me for 100 damage, um, it's going to actually deal 98 straight through to me, which, yeah. This is a stat that is well worth paying attention to, um, especially as you start going on and start looking at things like ion cannons and pulse cannons that start doing energy damage. Those energy ships, like say the Taurus, can be very powerful early on, simply because enemy fleets aren't going to have much in the way of energy shields, and ju thus you just chew through their armor completely. Bear that in mind, again, know what target you're up against and what you're intending to actually be shooting at. Now, this is your armor stats, let's come out one more time and finally look at the combat rolls here at the bottom right. Here we have starting off the anti-ship capability, which is graded from C through to S. Um, I'm assuming, I'm not including a dash as a grade, obviously. Um, graded from C through to S, obviously S is the highest it can be. A is very good, B is average, and C is below average. Here you can see the anti-ship capability of the Winged Hussar is Grade A, provides outstanding firepower against enemy ships. It does only have a C rating for anti-aircraft capability, it's basic anti-aircraft firepower, heck, at least it can do it. But remember, it's only going to shoot at corvettes and, uh, corvettes and aircraft after it, uh, all the frigates and destroyers have been destroyed because of the storm missile system's target priority. Then we have siege capability. B, again, decent siege firepower. You'll see that actually 1690 is not bad at all for a destroyer. That's pretty good. It's sort of standard moving up towards, it's almost an A rank. It's not as good as anything that's obviously dedicated, but it's still pretty good. And the one in the bottom left here is support capability. This is usually things like healing up air friendly ships, or if it's designed to be an anti-aircraft ship, that kind of thing, it'll tell you there. The Winged Hussar, it's not a support ship, it is an anti-ship destroyer. 
The middle one is its survivability. Here you can see the Winged Hussar does not have great survivability, it's great C. That's because the armor is only 20, it's a destroyer, it doesn't have huge amounts of armor, and it's only got that 2% energy shield. You'll notice that ships that have a lot higher armor or dedicated energy shields, etc., that grade will go right the way up for those. Finally, then, we have Strategic Capability. This is a bit of a weird stat. Um, the grade here of B means that it's got average manufacturing costs. This is often related to how quickly and how cheaply a ship can be produced. If you look, for example, at the FG300, you'll see that that has an A rating because it is very cheap and very quick to produce, even compared to other frigates. Finally, then, if we tap on the little icon here at the top, we get a full-on description page for this individual ship. In this case, the Winged Hussar. Equipped with a customized storm missile system, it can quickly and continuously search various ships to attack. Two dual-barreled turrets are installed at the bow of the ship, enabling it to attack heavy ships and city defenses. Just an idea there to give you a, a clue as to what this ship's purpose is and why you might use it. You can see it's a destroyer. It has a balanced capital ship unit. Finally then, the rolls. This is a middle row ship. It fights against ships and it is an overall firepower type. This is a ship that is not designed for tanking. It's not designed for anything like particularly like defensive. It is an overall firepower. This is one of those ships that just throws everything it has at the enemy fleet. It's designed against ships, so it's not so great against aircraft or against siege, but it does have some capability in those, and it is a middle row ship. You'll notice that ships are shot at front, middle, rear. Basically, if you've got ships in the front row, those will be the highest priority of the target. Then if you've got ships in the middle row, those will become the next target, followed by ships in the rear row. This does twin with um, the various different target priorities based on a weapon system. If, for example, the front row, if a ship is, uh, say, uh, preferenced against destroyers, and the front row has no destroyers, no frigates, nothing like that, it's got, say, just a cruiser, there are times when ships will ignore the front row to go for their target priority in the middle row. As far as we can tell, no weapon will hit the rear row um, intentionally from that kind of range, with the exception of carrier priority and aircraft. Those will shoot at the rear row first of all. Whereas for the most part, it tends to be sort of a weird mix, where it'll try to prioritize ships according to its target priority in the front row first. If there are none in the front row, it'll go for the middle row, um, and so on and so forth. It sort of goes down the target priority. In the case of the Winged Hussar, for example, We've got a ship here that prioritizes destroyers, followed by frigates. If there are frigates in the front row, like the FG300 armored type, it looks like the Winged Hussar will still prioritize those, because they're second on the priority list, and they're in the front row. Then it will go for the, sec uh, for the second row and shoot at destroyers and frigates there, if there's something like a battle cruiser in the front row. That seems to be how it works, at least. Um, it's not overly clear exactly how those priorities work together, um, at what point one of them over overrides the other, but it seems to be that essentially it will override row priority for second and first priority on the target of, on the weapon system priority targets. Anyway, I hope that all makes sense and I hope it gives you some ideas of like what your ship stats actually now all mean and how those go together to give you a different type of ship. Just to give a brief little example of how that might look different on a very different ship, let's move into the Mare Tranquillitatis, the Pulse Cannon Frigate type here. You'll see that this is very much based around its air defense. If we actually have a look at its weapon system, if I pull this one up, you'll see that this is an energy type weapon system. It's not anti-ship fire. This is designed for anti-aircraft fire. It's got no damage against ships at all. It will basically fight corvettes and fighters only. Afterwards, it kind of stops shooting. Very useful to know, well worth it, great frigate there if you're looking to deal with enemy aircraft. But otherwise, folks, that about covers everything I want to cover today in regards to ship statistics. I hope that gives you some insight into how this all works. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Come find us on the Catskull Discord, or indeed the Infinite Lagrange official Discord. I'd love to have a chat with you guys and see what kind of stuff you're all getting up to. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching right the way to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.